Hello and welcome back to GI Live Online. My name's Chris and I run GamesIndustry.biz and welcome to this session. There are a lot of people who are taking place in GI Live Online today looking for a publisher to help them release their games. But there is one other option, of course, and that is doing it yourself. One studio who has reclaimed its independence and has transformed itself into a self-publisher is the team behind Hitman, IO Interactive. And what's more, its latest game, Hitman 3, has enjoyed a massive launch. So how did they do it? Uh, to discuss that and more, we have IO Interactive's uh, CEO, Hakan Abrak. Hello, Hakan. How are you? I'm really good, thank you. Uh, and thank you for having me here. No, it's absolutely a privilege. And congratulations on the launch of Hitman 3. It seems to have gone really well. I mean, how well has it gone? Well, I mean, uh, it, it's been gone. It, it's been really, really good. Really, really good. Uh, like, um, you know, we look at Hitman 2016 and uh, Hitman 2 and compare that with Hitman 3, which we fully self-published. Um, you know, if we look at it from commercial perspective, uh, it's been you know, 300% uh, uh, better uh, commercially. And if you look at it uh, critically, this is also the highest rated game between the, the three of them. And um, yeah, I mean, this despite the uh, conditions, Corona times that we've uh, uh, developed this in and delivered this in, it's, it's, just, it's just amazing. So we're extremely grateful and, and extremely proud at the moment. Yeah, the, 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 I wasn't going to ask about pandemic, but actually, I guess it must have been really difficult to try and get a game when you're going through those end of you're trying to get those bugs sorted and you can't just shout across the office maybe quite as easily as you used to be able to. That must have been quite difficult. Yeah, it's, it's, it was different, right? You, you, we had to adapt to different workflows. Uh, we were used to having these um, focus meetings or war, war room meetings or, or you know, different different names that gave those meetings were towards the end, as you said, you're focusing on like uh, every hour, focusing on the most, um, you know, critical bugs to get them sorted, uh, um, to get ready to launch. Um, you know, that, that's one, one side of it on the, on the end phase, but just also in midst of production, just getting used to working, working from home. Um, I think the team has been doing incredible you know, they, they, they've been doing really, really well. The, the you know the producers have been doing really, really well with this as well. And uh, I think the communication has been uh, great, really, really great. And you know, I, I think it's also been like it's it's not a dance on roses, right? I mean, as you can see, there are a lot of other developers having problems, and we have challenges here as well, communication uh, challenges, obviously. But I think. You know, if there's something that IO knows is to do a Hitman game, uh, it's just like saying our team knows Kung Fu and we know, we know Hitman. And, uh, you know, Hitman 3 is also in many ways built upon um, the core systems of Hitman 1 and 2. Uh, it's a trilogy. It's also a, a connected universe, actually technically also connected in one executable um, as, uh, you know, Hitman 1 and 2 is inside Hitman 3. And the features we do are retroactively fitted into Hitman 1 and 2 to create this one wall of assassination. And, you know, that, that pre-investment in building that core platform has, um, has really helped us uh, to, you know, working from home in, during the pandemic to, um, to know, you know, have, have complete uh, insights and control of our features and our systems and our workflows that really helped us to keep our, our deadlines and, uh, and ship the game on, game on time. So it, it hasn't been without challenges. Uh, it, it's, it's been difficult, uh, but, uh, but the team has done great. Well, brilliant. And I, I've only played a little bit of it myself so far, and it seems to be as good as you'd expect. I mean, but looking back on the launch and, and sort of build up to it and everything, I mean, what, do, what really worked, do you think, around getting the game out there? And, and or maybe conversely, what didn't work? I think um, what really worked was, you know, um, publishing this game ourselves. Uh, we had obviously full control on when we wanted to publish it. Something as significant as a, as a street date, obviously. Um, we were actually at one point considering 
uh, for numerous uh, reasons, considering a, an episodic release of Hitman 3, just like we did with Hitman 2016, uh, to start in, in August already uh, with the first location and then roll it out towards the end of the year and complete the season. That was one of the considerations. And obviously, like, you know, one of the reasons for that, like we've had some good experiences, but also some, some challenging uh, feedback on the first one. Um, but with the third one, us financing the whole thing ourselves, uh, there's obviously a commercial aspect to it as well. Uh, can we get, can we start uh, Hitman a bit earlier in August and then um, get some of the sales going so we have enough cash flow, honestly, to, to, to be able to release and finish, finish the game? Um, so there's there were tons of things also in terms of you know, you know, early access ideas and, 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 and whatnot. But it's not, a, it's not really a multiplayer game, so it doesn't really fit, fit, the, uh, uh, fit the format for, for Hitman, you could say. Um, but, you know, we, we've, done, we've done really well with uh, Hitman 1, which, which, is, uh, uh, you know, which we are the publisher of, uh, and we continuously did really well with Hitman 1 and Hitman 2 as well, uh, together with the WB, which... Um, you know, uh, which made it possible to be able to find the cash flow and financing uh, and release the game to push the release date to January and release the whole whole product, which actually was what we, we, we preferred. So um, so once we had, you know, we, we took those risks and we had, uh, we had, a, we saw the, the light at the end of the tunnel to choose an optimum space for, for releasing a, a Hitman game, uh, we went for it. And for us, that was uh, January, like uh, Hitman, <clears throat> Hitman 2 launched in, uh, in November uh, 18. And, um, you know, that's like, there are a lot of big, big blockbusters, uh, blockbuster games releasing in, in, in November. And um, I think this was just shortly after Red, 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 uh, Dead Redemption 2, uh, which obviously had an impact on, on our sales. And I've always, for the longest time, been a um, big fan of, of Hitman, the idea of releasing a Hitman game in, in January, I think uh, it's a it's a great uh, great space for. Uh, I always thought there was a great space for a Hitman game uh, to have um, the attention it it deserves and and the kind of game it is. Um, and um, so we decided for January, and you know, not knowing how that would go, we'd never done that before. Uh, but it turned out to be uh, uh, great timing. Great timing. Mm -hmm. We've had. Uh, first of all, it obviously helped that it was uh, uh, a game that was the highest rated. I mean, the first and second one are also like mid-80s, but this one is the highest rated. It's a great way of ending a trilogy as well. Uh, um, and um, uh, timing-wise, hitting as a title on new, new consoles as well, new generation, PlayStation 5, uh, Series X, um, was, was also great. I mean, I think... Like in this pandemic times, publishing this ourselves, we published it on ten platforms, uh, January the twentieth. So that was uh, an, an undertaking as well. So everything kind of uh, lined up uh, perfectly for a great release, which, you know, which we are, um, as I said before, like extremely grateful for, and it's doing amazing. Actually, a Hitman game has never, uh, never recouped its uh, complete dev cost in in in. In the, in the first week, which which we did, which was um, absolutely amazing. Yeah, I, I do a lot of analysis of the market, actually. And, and um, I hope people will realize if you've got a game that's good and it's got a fan base, you don't have to release in Q4. And in fact, I'd recommend you don't because your marketing dollars isn't going to go as far in October and November as it will do in a January or February. You know, Capcom's most successful ever game, Monster Hunter World, was released in January. You know, yeah. the, the, you, there, is, there is a real opportunity as long as, you know, Yes, there's not. You don't have the you don't have the Christmas sales window, but unless you're Call of Duty or Grand Theft Auto or, or FIFA, you know, or Assassin's Creed or something like that, you know, the, the real opportunity in in in, in January because gamers, you know, gamers are uh, there's a science to it as well though because you can also you know January there's all the you are competing with all the Christmas games maybe being on sale and stuff like that, but there there is it is a um, it's obviously, and right now, if you've got people who may have a PlayStation Five or a new Xbox, and there isn't actually that many games coming out. At the minute, it's a, it's there is a it's great to be able to have that control. Um, it's, it's really brilliant. Is there anything that you'd have done differently 
um, perhaps on retrospect, because it seems to be you've done all the, you managed to achieve all the things you wanted to do. But was there anything that you may think, ah, next time maybe we'll do this differently? You know, I think there, there are a ton of things. Um, uh, but like overall, I think uh, we were, we were lucky with many things. Uh, a lot of things went well. Um, I think the things that I would have we would have done differently is um, not to expect because it's the third uh, iteration in the trilogy and you know the the digital platform that has been tested uh, for for you know through the first and second game not to expect that uh, a launch would run smoothly um, like we didn't expect everything would run smoothly obviously but we thought that it was you know battle hardened. Our uh, our online uh, part, and so we had some we had some um, challenges, issues. You know, uh, tested many times, but um, you know maybe we should have tested it a few few extra times. So we had we had a few issues about you know um, importing Hitman One and Two into Hitman Three to be able to play from the get go. So some people unfortunately had to wait uh, a bit uh, to start their progress because uh, they they would like to have their um, profiles transferred. So. So there are some something some things there. I mean, I'm not going to defend it by saying that there's, it, it's a challenging thing to release a game. It's very complex. There's always something that goes south. But um, so something there, I think we could have um, double checked uh, definitely. Um, and I think I think some you know uh, there are a few linked to that. Uh, we should maybe in time started a bit more uh, support. Uh, with external partners um, to have to um, to have a, a group of support to help with the inflow of of uh, inquiries and issues that was linked to this. Um, I think we were a bit in some in uh, some instances we were a bit slow to to be able to react uh, quickly enough to people to assure them that this is being worked on and it's going to be fixed uh, asap. So. Uh, I think there are like uh, practical things, uh, things like that. Um, but overall, in terms of, there's always something also where, where you know, where did you spend the advertisement budget? Uh, you know, in hindsight, you know, the effect of this is was X and Y. We should have spent it here. So, so you you learn something uh, from from it. But I would say um, we have a pretty good grasp of of uh, of Hitman. Obviously, you know, having done this for. For, for a while now, but also um, Hitman One was shipped or published with uh, with Square Enix, but we have always been very involved. You know, we've always been like a, an in, independent, operated studio uh, within Square Enix. So we've had a lot of these um, uh, groups and functionalities, and you know, people with expertise on, you know, uh, working with the platforms, account managers, uploading bills. Uh, uh, testing and, and whatnot. So we've had a lot of this expertise. Uh, we've done a lot of that because, you know, obviously Hitman, th throughout Hitman, uh, uh, the trilogy, the, the, the last four or five years, because um, Hitman 1, well, Hitman is a single player game, but it's also a live platform. There are like live events happening. And, uh, you know, we've been, since uh, Hitman 2016, been delivering new content on a weekly basis. And updating the game, so we've kind of our our publishing muscles or uh, you know operation muscles have been uh, have been trained for for you know mm. for five five years now. So um, yeah, I mean there's always something about should we have spent money here and there, but uh, but I think overall um, uh, it's been it's been good learnings that we're gonna you know correct uh, moving forward. But overall, I, I think we couldn't be happier with how things went. Brilliant. Excellent. Well, it seems to have gone really well. Was it always the plan when you became an independent studio to self-publish? Did you always imagine this is what you would do? Honestly, when we became, became uh, independent, our first focus was to survive, to live another day. Uh, I mean, we literally had, I, I've, I've been uh, talking about this in, in, in different occasions. Uh, I want to be completely honest about this. I mean, we literally had three months cash flow. Uh, before we had to kind of close shop when we went independent. So, you know, uh, to be fair, I mean, Square Enix uh, were, were absolutely uh, fair 
around the time where we did an MBO, um, but we we knew that we were taking a huge risk, and um, and that you know th- this this phase together with the rest of the uh, owners would be on on the news of uh, closing down a studio for twenty years if, if we didn't turn things around very 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 quickly. So I think um, the first you know, six months wasn't about grand plans and conquering the world and independence uh, of, uh, you know, taking Europe or, or, or or the globe as the, as the biggest developer. And, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't like goals like that, but I think we were, we're running on the belief that the best years and uh, the best, you know, uh, chapters of IO's history uh, was not, the, the 20 years uh, we had lived there, it, they, they were in front of us. Uh, that's the belief we had. Uh, but for the immediate thoughts were really just about survival and keeping our independence, really. I mean, after, after we, went, we did the MBO and, um, you know, things were, the, the different initiatives we did with Hitman 2016, it really went above and beyond our expectation with sales that, that, gave us, um, you know, the opportunity to live another day, to not uh, sell the company right away or uh, to not to get uh, uh, new owners, uh, minority owners or majority owners that would, you know, take us in, a, in, in another direction than, than we were maybe dreaming of. Um, uh, and what, what we were dreaming of was to get to a place where we could finish uh, the trilogy because this has been a journey for nine years. It's been on the way for a long time to create this world of assassination, this connected uh, three games in one, or t- telling this overarching story. Uh, that that was uh, our mission, and we had um, we, we were working on Hitman Two, which was nowhere near mid uh, in production, and um, we had Hitman One um, that was uh, earning money but we had these cash flow problems, right? So, so there were some tough decisions in front of us that, that we needed to make. So at that point, we weren't like, uh, at all cost, we need to, to, uh, to publish ourselves. I think we had the confidence and the belief that we would do it, we could do it with Hitman 2 already, but we didn't have um, the, nest, you know, the, the, um, the cash, the commercial means mm. to actually uh, follow through with that. And so you've managed to do it, you do it now. What has been the benefit of you self-publishing um, that you didn't have before, either at Square Enix or, or Warner Brothers? What's been the benefits to self-publishing? I think there's been a, a, some, some rather significant ones. One of them was uh, what I just mentioned before about launching the, the launch window, right? The street date. Um, honestly, we had like similar uh, conversations on Hitman 2. Uh, that was, uh, as mentioned, released uh, in uh, in uh, Christmas time, and and I I was personally really trying to um, get it out of that window and, and try to ship it in in January. And honestly, like I think it would have been better. Like it's always easy to say you, you don't know. Like it's it's the past, but uh, but I do believe that it w- it would have been better for Hitman Two to launch in January um, two thousand nineteen, and um, so. Alone that, obviously, to be able to uh, decide that with with uh, publishing it yourself, uh, we 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 went through with that in in in, in January with Hitman Three, and and uh, things are going amazing. Um, so th- so um, the street date, obviously, one thing. The other thing is um, the that it's completely unplugged, like it's unfiltered, like it's. Um, with that, I mean the the things that we create here um, and the, the communication of it or the marketing and the creation of 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 the levels itself it's so it's so connected and it's so uh, close to heart uh, and it's holistic and so we don't have to translate that to a a, a different unit um, uh, overseas if you know what I mean mm-hmm. uh, so so it's been it's been really effective to drill into the heart of what Hitman Three is. Um, what is it that our director, our leads, 
uh, were feeling when they were creating these levels, uh, stories, and uh, and these assets to how do we want to talk about this product, like uh, in this game and this experience. So I think that has been very effective, uh, and you know, over over the years, having a really good idea of our fans and what they want from our franchise, from our games, and to be able to speak to them uh, directly has been has been a privilege and it's been very uh, very effective. So I would say um, that unfiltered unfiltered uh, feeling um, that uh, it's from from the from the devs directly to the um, to the gamers and fans. I think there's something about it, and it's been very, very effective for us. It's been it's been real for us. Um, and I think maybe the third thing is like um, you you really you know I always take responsibility for the for the decisions and products that we do, but it's really one to one when you're uh, publishing it yourself. Like um, you really feel. Uh, the hopes and dreams of the people here in the corridors, uh, well, from from teams lately because of the pandemic, but uh, but you know what I mean, like uh, uh, what they hope for this product um, and to take responsibility for that as a publisher as well. Like uh, what I mean is you you completely own up to your um, uh, successes and, and your mistakes, right? I mean, there's no one else to blame or to point at or date they did it wrong or uh, they misunderstood or things like that, that, that sometimes, even though if you don't say it, it is like, like it's human nature feel like that. I, I think. Um, so it's been incredibly uh, fulfilling to, to take complete responsibility for things uh, to know that if you do something right or wrong, it's um, there's no one else to look at. It's, it's us. Right, and that just gave it another, I think, nerve, another motivation, um, and um, uh, I think, yeah, that together with the um, with the swiftness of things, like decisions being taken within these four walls, um, that has been, um, I think, that's been given that extra boost for us and uh, and effectiveness. Nice, brilliant. Well, everyone should self-publish then. Well, I mean, it's, I guess, the challenge is obviously you need to build a, a team who can do this. You know, the, you talked about the marketing and you talked about the, um, the decisions you had to make. What did, what did you have to, what, what did you have to build? What do you have to add to the studio in order to have, uh, to be able to, to be able to do this? Well, I think, uh, as I said before, I mean, we've had a, a lot of these functions already. Uh, you know, we were preparing builds and uh, uploading and, and whatnot. But when that is said, obviously, we had to train some of our existing people and hire some new talent to go even deeper into the relationship with the platform, um, with the different platforms. Uh, because it's not only about having a game that is bug free, but it's also uh, about uh, setting it up correctly. Um, especially if you have, if you're doing something different than that, the, you know, um, that, that we are doing with Hitman, it's, um, it's this connected universe. So Hitman 1, 2, and 3 is connected, right? You can buy Hitman um, 1, 2 and unlock them from within Hitman 3. So like from the menu, uh, Hitman 1 starts with Paris. And in, in the menu, it's already there all the way to the last location in, in Hitman 3. So, and, and those things have to correspond with the backend of the, you know, of the different uh, platform owners. So a lot of uh, complexity is there. Actually, um, I think not many people know this, but um, Hitman that we launched in 2016 was supposed to be one ever-expanding live product just like an, you know, whatever, MMO or something, right? You would have mm. this one executable. So Hitman 2 and 3 would just expand within this. Uh, so it would be like Hitman, World of Assassination, and just growing from there, it would be the same executable. That was the, that was the, uh, the vision. Uh, we had to do it a bit differently uh, with, you know, where you can unlock things in Hitman, Hitman 2 and Hitman 3. Um, because when we went independent, um, there, there are just some technical um, circumstances uh, where we actually couldn't something as simple, it sounds very simple, but something like a publishing ID in the back end, we couldn't like transfer that 
from Square Enix to us with one of the platform holders. And so, so we had to kind of create another product uh, and, uh, and do a new, new publishing ID. And then you could unlock Hitman 1 within uh, Hitman 2 as one, mm-hmm. as one executable. So we had to like jump some hoops and learn things there, right? And th- there you're like, um, um, you know, we were, sometimes we were like, can this really be true? Like, you know, we had to learn uh, these things as well and how to communicate and, and where to push the platform owners. Like, uh, you're like, ah, this, is, this is awesome for you as well. If you can have this functionality, do you think you can, you know, you can do it in time or do you want to do it? And it's, you know, and so um, c- c- Contra, like there are some things we shouldn't ask for because it's too complex and they have obviously trillion of other clients. Uh, so um, um, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of learnings on the back end. Um, there were a lot of learnings on, in terms of understanding how things are working on the digital stores, like how to, um, like how to um, position your product. I mean, we did something called the, the uh, free starter pack um, where we had the tutorial and then some locations around Easter or Christmas. We have some special locations which we, we, we uh, uh, put up for free. Uh, and um, so we kind of had to learn about the algorithms uh, when people, uh, uh, you know, h- how can you stay relevant on the uh, digital stores uh, to to kind of get insights into what works and and what what what, what doesn't um, you know using uh, our relationship to account managers and just asking the right questions and and getting feedback. So there are a lot of uh, like practical things and very impactful things like that that we had to learn that that was with uh, Square Enix before, for example, uh, that we had to take on. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, you know, besides the operational and development side, we also had to learn. Uh, and buff up a bit on the commercial side, uh, you know, analytics and commercial to understand a bit more about uh, looking back on what worked, what didn't, to uh, look at the right data, to kind of optimize on, on you know, do, do people like this mode? Do they like these uh, game modes within the game? Uh, do they play it a, a lot? Like, uh, do they enjoy it? If not, you know, maybe we shouldn't. We should produce more of those or we should uh, change them, make them more exciting to get people's engagement. And these things are, um, you know, I think uh, there have been so many uh, interesting learnings for us here. Uh, I, I tend to say that we are, we are doing a single play as a service with Hitman the last uh, five years here, right? Because, you know, every week, as I said, we've been updating the game, giving something new to the, to the, to the gamers. And, uh, you know, the... the We've had more than uh, a million unique uh, users uh, every month for many months with Hitman 1 when we did the different uh, free offerings. And from that, we learned, learned a ton on you know, what people like. There's obviously the, the main dish, the main story uh, missions, but also the escalations, it loses targets and challenges and whatnot, and tons of different things, the sniper challenges. Uh, tons of different things that you can do within the uh, world of assassination. Uh, just you know, listening and uh, uh, and uh, learning on for what they liked and what didn't. We updated the tutorial, for example. We could see that people didn't understand some parts of the tutorial. We we updated it, sharpened it, so people could have a better onboarding. And we did that for for a single player game, which is a bit un, un, unusual. Uh, but uh, you know, tons of learnings for future. If I always to do a, a you know an online game one day. Who knows? No, no, tease, tease. <laughs> well, you you also launched. You mentioned it earlier. You launched quite a few platforms, including new ones. There's a new PlayStation. There's a new Xbox. You even got the game out on Switch via cloud streaming, which was quite a unique one. Um, how has that experience been for you? Um, challenging. I think it's safe to say. Uh, as I said, there's ten ten platforms. You know, with the old generation, new generations. Um, you know, in, in, in pandemic times, working from home, testing, uh, you know, on all, all these formats every time you have an update, uh, it's been it's been very challenging. So, uh, but I, but team has been doing amazing with with uh, adapting and putting these new workflows. Um, as I said, it, it's a bit linked to our legacy, uh, our heritage with um, operations, with doing these things ourselves. Uh, we are we have our own technology. 
So in you know in terms of tech wise and uh, uh, you know we have some pretty savvy people on on different platforms on the tech side, uh, which you know uh, <laughs> pretty pretty proud of these people and uh, they are. Um, they're just hungry for every time there's a new hardware, hardware a new a, a generation of consoles, just been jumping on it and, uh, and, and doing a great job. So I think the transition from uh, PlayStation 4 to PlayStation 5 and Xbox as well, it's, it's, been, um, it's been a welcome challenge for people. And I think that they've done great. The game is running extremely smoothly. And as you said, it's one of the few new titles on the, on the consoles. And as we can see, the more consoles have been sold, uh, we, we, we feel that we can see that there's a consistent interest for, for Hitman um, since January because, um, because it is one of the, one of the few uh, um, natural uh, next-gen titles. So... Uh, it's been challenging, but also very, very satisfying uh, to to have such an impact, also on the new new generations with uh, with our fully self published game. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's something completely new, right? As you said, with the cloud service part on on uh, Switch, uh, it was an opportunity that you know they they contacted us. Uh, we we had done some pre analysis on trying to see whether we could run our game on on the Switch. Um, you know, normally, uh, but um, uh, it's been, that was very, very challenging. I mean, our game is actually not, Hitman is not only uh, tough on, on graphic cards, it's extremely, extremely uh, heavy on CPU usage um, because, I mean, we have an extremely f streaming friendly platform uh, technology but we're not really using it. Everything is, is uh, in memory and everything is simulated at all times because we have these huge, um, um, uh, you know, um, uh, cities, uh, hubs that, that we just uh, let you go loose on, which means that this, this um, uh, theater is playing, you know, all, all the um, patrols and everything's happening there. The, the, the fashion show and the back-end uh, uh, restaurants, and everything's running at the same time because in the Hitman, you know, freedom of choice is a, is a huge pillar for us, which means you can place a, um, a remote explosive in one end of the city and you can go to the other end of the city and you can just activate it and, you know, things will uh, go uh, haywire. You know, people will go panic. Uh, the target will be escorted into a safe house and you can safely await the person there disguised and whatnot, right? So you can do these uh, very complex, um, exotic, uh, you know, different solutions of taking out your, your targets. And that, that means that the whole thing is simulated at all times, which is extremely heavy on, on, on CPU, uh, which was also a, a challenge. But then... They contacted us about this uh, new secret uh, thing they were doing, um, and it was actually not. Um, it was pretty late in development, so we didn't have much time. But I mean, they were amazing uh, to work with. Uh, so they were really proactive and did a lot of work on their side to make this uh, make this happen. So together with them, we did a, a valiant effort and, and uh, got it done uh, to release a day on date. And uh, I, think, I think Hitman is a great game for, for Switch. Hitman is it's not, it's not your uh, action Call of Duty shooter with that kind of uh, you know, precision <laughs> fidelity needed on the, on the sticks. Uh, in many ways, I mean, I call it a Simpson steroids. Uh, it's, it's, in many ways, it's, it's a game of uh, puzzle as well, right? It's, it's an action game, but it's also like taking disguises and and uh, looking around and, and using some tactics and how you want to solve things. And I think uh, that, you know, when we heard about this opportunity, we were like, also, as I said before, we were trying to think about how we can get on the Switch because I think Hitman uh, does um, does really well in that format. So, uh, yeah, so uh, we, we, we got it done. Uh, and I tell you, when we were talking to our tech team, they were like, you know, what are you talking about? We have all this format. Like, yeah, but it's, you know, they're going to help and whatnot. And there was a bit of a, there a bit of a resistance, right? I mean, uh, at, at the start, but, you know, when we got in, got in touch with the, with the people over there, um, I think we got more and more comfortable, more confident. 
that we can pull this off together. Uh, so uh, I'm really, really proud of that. Mm. <clears throat> I play my Switch a lot more. I've always been tempted to get the Switch version, actually, simply so I can... Um, um, simply because uh, it's easier for me because I'm, I'm of an age where sitting in front of the TV for a period of time is, is I've got a kid, you know, I'm not allowed. Um, so uh, it's, it's quite good. It's quite suitable for me, but I've not, I've not, I've not let it go, but I've heard good things. Um, well, it's, it, it's, it's been a really active time for IO. Hitman obviously is the big new launch. It's done very well, but also you've signed the James Bond uh, license as well for a new game. that has got the whole internet very excited. What does the next few years look like for you? Well, I mean, um, I think they look extremely exciting uh, and uh, extremely uh, busy and, and challenging. I think the whole industry is uh, is extremely hot right now. Uh, we've been talking about publishing our own games, right? And uh, I think Hitman, Hitman is not going to be the last game that we publish ourselves. We already announced that um, Bond is being is published by IO. And, uh, you know, in the future, you will... You know, our, our publishing is definitely um, going to grow and expand. Um, right now, we're focusing, we've been focusing officially on publishing our own games, but uh, I think it's very likely that in the future that, that um, we will expand um, and maybe publish uh, other developers' uh, games as well if they fit. If they fit, um, you know, this, this, it's not like I.O. has ambitions of turning into uh, Volkswagen uh, of publishing kind of thing, right? That's, that's not our, our ambition. But, I mean, we've, we've done really well, proven our, to ourselves that, you know, uh, when it comes to um, the Asian fantasy, at least, that uh, we're, doing, we're doing pretty well and are performing um, games published by others before in this uh, with, with Hitman at least, right? So we have great confidence and we have, um, uh, I think, a curiosity to like how this is going to continue with Hitman. And uh, now that we are looking at publishing a Bond, like, what are we doing right? What is it that we're doing well? We have some good ideas about that, but we'll be keep keep looking into that and see other are, uh, are there other games out there than what we're doing? Where other other developers that we could be a, a a good partner for in the future? So this is something that's in in motion, um, and um, I think um, definitely to think that it's very likely that um, that IO would be publishing not only our own games but but other games in the future other people's games in the future as well um and you know it, it's like it's just a handful of years ago where this was unthinkable where it was more just the few big publishers that were publishing all the games but i think things are things are changing i mean that 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 would that still works for many many people i i do believe there they have obviously a, a a role to play moving forward. Uh, the the publishers, um, the big publishers have been, that we have been used to, and uh, I'm just going to be open here and say that um, you know um, it's also likely that IO will be working with with another publisher uh, or one of our games being published by somebody else. That's also possible. So I think it's just we're just looking at a future where where it's not rigid. It's uh, it's more much more open, which I think is exciting. Um, uh, you, you asked the questions about what, what what we have learned, what capabilities. Like, for example, um, one of the things that were completely unthinkable was the disc. Um, I mean, many people are saying that this is getting less and less of a role in the future. Everything's going to be digital, and I think that's that's true. But it's still relevant. Uh, a lot of people who still like to buy their game physically, a uh, physical copy. And we learned ton, tons there as well. Uh, I mean, Hitman 3, um, we're working with Square Enix in Europe, but in the US, we are, uh, we are the publisher on the um, dis distributor on the disc as well there. So um, I think um, there are many, many different models in the future. And I think everybody developing their game passionately should also think about how they want to publish or who they want to publish it with 
uh, passionately. Like it's not, it shouldn't be just like a business transaction. It should also be uh, thoughts about, you know, cultural fit, mentality, ethics, and, and, and whatnot. So, and I, and I think it's great because there, there are many different options in the future, whereas there were less in, in the past. So um, I think that's great for, great for everyone. Great for mm. competition, uh, great for expressing yourself uh, more precisely and working with people who are um, compatible with you, uh, mm. you know, closer. It's not just, though, you're not just you. So it's fantastic you're expanding in the publishing side, but you're also expanding development side as well, right? We're sort of hiring new people and, and expanding there. How's that all going? Well, I mean, um, you know, besides... Uh, doing um, working in the Hitman universe. Now, I, I think 1847, it's safe to say that uh, after the trilogy, he needs a, a, a bit of a breather, he needs a bit of a break, uh, but that doesn't mean that things are not happening within the um, role of agents um, um, and role of assassination, right? So we have some pretty good, cool ideas that we are looking into for uh, within the role of assassination. So uh, I think um, some of them will bear fruit, so you will you will probably see some some development there that's a bit different uh, mm -hmm. and, and exciting. Um, so there's obviously that um, universe, the world of assassination that we that we're working on. And then there's the the, the Bond Bond universe, um, which um, which is absolutely amazing. We're very very excited about that. Um, we are, you know, you know the the privilege to do an original. Becoming story, creating your own on digital bond. It's it's absolutely amazing for us, um, and we're looking forward to see to create that beginning and to see that universe expand and and, and grow as well. Um, but besides that, <clears throat> we are, you know, we've created uh, four four IPs from scratch. Uh, we always have incubation R and D going on. We always have these crazy ideas and worlds and characters that we're thinking of. Um, uh, without going to too much detail, we have a third universe that we're working actively on, uh, which is um, something um, a bit different um, and an absolutely love child, uh, something that a lot of uh, veterans and core people have been dreaming of for a while in, in here. Uh, so equally excited about that as we are with the two different two other uh, universes I just talked about. Uh, so if you think about um, these things and, uh, you know, our publishing uh, ambitions in the future as well, um, it's expected that that, that will grow. Um, we are more than more than 200 people today. And um, we have a uh, studio here in Copenhagen, obviously. And uh, we opened a studio in Malmö, and um, uh, like a world world news today here, uh, right now is that uh, we are opening our third third studio in uh, in Barcelona, uh, which we will uh, come with some more details on very very soon. So, um, and it's all a part of creating, um, you know, having these location places where. We believe there's good culture, there's um, exciting, you know, environments. It's also exciting places where I think a lot of talent, talent around the world would like to uh, live and, and work from. So, um, yeah, I mean, within the next, uh, you know, two, three, four years, I think we're looking at a future where IO is maybe double, double the amount double the size of people we are today. Um, so, yeah, very busy, very exciting, um, and very um, ambitious uh, times ahead. I mean, we have a very, um, we have a very humble goal. Um, we call it the most desirable studio game developer. We want to be the most desirable game developer in Europe by, uh, by 2024. And, um, you know, it might be a very high goal to aim towards, but um, we've been through fire and brimstone and we've just uh, grown stronger and stronger from that. And I believe we have uh, the people, the culture, the will and the drive uh, to, uh, to go for it. And uh, that's exactly what we're doing. That's amazing. So publishing, you've uh, got three worlds you're working in, you've now got three studios. 
Wow. That's <laughs> quite, quite a few little revelations there. It's brilliant. Fantastic. Well, I mean, I'm conscious of the time. I think we're taking it a long time of your time um uh, but so i'll wrap up now but actually i'll ask one final question for anyone watching this who's thinking about self-publishing their own title and i know that you may not want them to maybe maybe you should publish their title but for those people who are uh, self-publishing their own title what advice would you give them you know what, what would you say to them first of all i want to say uh like um i think my point before was us also that the more the merrier like, I'm not like, uh, hey, I'm a publisher now. Don't publish. Let me publish. It's not like that. I think the more the merrier. I think the more um, custom it is, the more um, like fitting for the game. There should be more options, really. So I think I welcome everybody who's uh, considering uh, publishing. I think it's a different industry today than it was uh, five, five, ten years ago. And I think the opportunities are, are, are there to, uh, to do this as well, if it's the right thing for you. Um, I think uh, a few words, um, you know, besides the practical things, obviously seek uh, help or uh, uh, guidance and whatnot and exp- for, with other people who had experiences with this, uh, you know, either a long time publishing or new publisher about, you know, what went wrong and what should you be aware of and, and whatnot. Apart from those practical things, I think one thing that's important is to be uh, to promise yourself to be um, uh, true to your values and 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 transparent uh, all the way through. I think some of these things are are universal values, like to be transparent with yourself and with the partner that you're working with, if you're publishing for somebody else or publishing uh, for yourself. Um, I think, um, and by that, obviously, it's implied that uh, you you try to formulate what your values are. What is it that you feel you are not only like, of course, what you, what you feel you're good at, what is it that you are, where, where are your superpowers as you could say as, as a skill and whatnot, but beyond that, who are you? What are your ethics? What are your values to be, um, to be able to formulate those, to be able to talk about those. Um, and it can be difficult to kind of encompass that, but, but to do an effort to, 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 uh, to be able to articulate that and uh, and then um, be true to those uh, throughout, you know, good and bad times. I think uh, that's the best advi- advice I can give. Amazing. Um, thank you so much, Hakan, for your time today. That was Absolutely. really insightful, really interesting. Um, uh, if you've you know, hopefully everyone's watched the end of this. If you haven't, um, do check out gamesindustry.biz. We will be uh, writing up uh, a few of these sessions. Um, so thank you so much for your time. Um, for those that are watching, um, that's it from us. Uh, later today, uh, uh, we have some fascinating sessions on making great game trailers. That might be really useful to you. That's We've got one of the biggest marketing specialists, G2, discussing that. We also have some top indie developers discussing about uh, how they work together and why working together with other studios is a good thing to do. Um, you can also rewatch this session and indeed all of our sessions via live.gamesindustry.biz. You should also check out games.biz over the coming weeks for all the write-ups. Um, but until then, thank you all for joining us today and we'll see you later. Thank you. Bye.